Hello, hello, my name is Emilio and today we're gonna to be talking about Windows and Mac in a business, in a company. Which one should you be using? Subscribe, clicking on that button and on the notification bell to be kept up to date with everything that I have got going on. So as you know, my name is Emilio and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're gonna to be talking about uh, Mac and Windows, Mac versus Windows, Windows versus Mac in a enterprise, in a business, in a company. Now I have spent a fair bit of time in an earlier video uh, talking about the comparisons between the two uh, for personal use. Uh, and we, we sort of talked about applications, file systems, things of that nature uh, between the two. So I would recommend checking that video out to give you a good foundation for this video. But this video is going to get a bit more focused around a business setup for your users, for staff, et cetera, et cetera. But it's also gonna be fairly technically focused uh, for those who work in IT. So those who maybe are watching, who are in the IT industry, who are working in help desk and support, the system engineers, the network engineers, whatever it may be, and are wanting to understand, well, how do I get uh, things working well in the back end if I've got Macs and Windows? Uh, which one is better? Which one should I be selecting for my staff? So if you go back years and years ago, I'm talking about 10 to 15 years ago, uh, Windows was the, by far, was the leader when it came to enterprise. Uh, Windows was used in almost every single business and majority of staff were running Windows. That has slowly been changing over the years as Apple has started getting its hand in, uh, well, it's, it's, it's foot inside many, many more businesses. Um, a lot of this is mainly due to the success of the iPhone, the iPad, where staff members, people in the corporate world started taking a lot more notice of Apple because the iPhone was just so easy to use, it was just so intuitive, and it just worked, and they said, hey, the Mac could be a good alternative to Windows. Now, if you're thinking about applications, you know, do apps work on both Windows and Mac? Well, the short answer is yes and no. Applications will work on Windows that are written for Windows, and applications will work on Mac that are written for Mac. A lot of companies nowadays will release software for both Windows and Mac. If I can use the example of the application VLC. VLC, most people know about it, software to let you play almost any sort of video format that is available for Mac and it's available for Windows. So if you go to the VLC website, you can download one or the other. So back in the day, folks, especially people in IT, were a bit scared to adopt the Mac because they thought I won't be able to run all of my apps on a Mac the same as I can on Windows. So a lot of apps in the olden days that were Windows only, over the number of years that have passed, um, these applications have now started becoming available on the Mac platform as well. So there is a lot more flexibility now when it comes to applications. Of course, not everything is going to work on one or the other, and not every application that is for Windows will be available for the Mac. But there are so many good applications out there that uh, if there is a Windows version of it, then there is likely to be an equivalent Mac version of it. Very, very similar in functionality. Now, if you've got some sort of decision-making power around what computers your staff should be using, you've got to think about what do, the, what do people do on their computers. If they're going to be running spreadsheets, working on Word documents, surfing the internet, I'd say I would stick to probably a Windows-based computer. Going and buying Dell, HP, Lenovo, whatever the brand may be, and getting Windows loaded onto them. Uh, it's gonna be much cheaper, you can buy a lot more, you can bulk build them, and uh, it's just very, very economical for the staff. The other thing to consider is that majority of your staff are probably gonna be more familiar with Windows than they are on Mac. Again, this is slowly changing, but majority of people still have not adopted the Mac um, as much as Windows. So a lot of staff will still be running Windows. A lot of staff may be running Macs at home. And they're the ones who are generally gonna ask you, oh, I would love to have a Mac at work. And then you're gonna go, okay, um, what, are, what what's your job? What do you actually do? They're gonna tell you, well, I just do some Excel. Uh, so why do you need a Mac? Just because I like it. I like, I like that it, it's shiny, it's silver. 
and it looks really nice. It's, it's a bit expensive for just running Excel. Now that's something that has to be considered. The Mac, of course, they, they generally look nicer. Apple is very, very good at design. They've got a huge team of really, really smart design people that make things look really slick, but it's not for everybody. This is, again, this is my opinion, of course, right? If you're in a workforce and you don't um, have any concerns around the costings, sure, go and buy Macs for everybody if that's what you want to do. But I'm just sort of giving you some examples of, I guess, of my experience that generally if staff don't need a Mac, don't get them a Mac. If staff need a Mac for their job, then perhaps look at doing that. So for example, where you may work, there could be people who are involved in design, graphics people, video people, you've got a comms person, you've got people who are sort of doing things that are a, little, you know, a bit more multimedia related. Uh, then I would say, yes, then go and get Macs for those people. The process can be easier. The applications are easier. Um, than perhaps the equivalent on Windows. Now, that is opinionated, and a lot of people have very strong opinions one way or the other, but that's just what I have generally seen. Something else that is interesting is what I've seen in many, many places is, is um, if you have a lot of visitors coming into a building, right, coming into an office, for example, uh, customers, things of that nature, and they have to sit in a reception area, the rest of the building maybe is closed off, they can't see the rest of the building, but they're just uh, in the reception area. Um, a lot of places, and I've done this and I've recommended this as well, is um, perhaps for the receptionists, um, get them a Mac uh, because they look cool, they look better. And it just gives that nice impression when they when you see a Mac that just looks shiny. Uh, it doesn't mean that the receptionist actually needs a Mac. They, they don't need a Mac, but it's there because people will see it and they have an impression of the company based on how that's set up. Right, it's just a looks thing more than anything else. So we've talked here about cost and the need. Do staff need it? What about compatibility? All right, a lot of companies, a lot of people in IT. This is something that I found. Right, this is uh, this is it's a strange, strange thing working in IT and seeing people who are passionate about technology, who love, love, love technology, yet they hate and detest Apple. They just can't stand the Mac. They can't stand the iPhone. They want to do Windows or Linux and they want to do the Android platform for the phones, smartphones, and they just can't stand Apple. Then you've got people who are in the Apple suite, people who say are Mac engineers, uh, who are on the other spectrum where they just don't understand how people could use Windows computer. And they can't see the benefit that Windows may have over the Mac in certain instances. We're very, very opinionated towards our side, right? We love our side. We love the fight as well. If you are in technology, if you work in IT, if you're in a company, you know what? Be open to both. Uh, they've both got pros and cons. And uh, I believe, in all honesty, it'll make you a better IT professional if you actually know how to run both, if you understand the differences between both, if you understand how they work together, that will make you very, very valuable in the IT field. So compatibility around applications generally isn't a concern. Compatibility around files generally isn't a concern. On Windows and on Mac, you can still connect to shared drives. You know, if you've got, say, a file server set up, you've got shared drives, you can map those on Windows, on the Mac, you can actually just connect them to a server and have them as aliases, which essentially are shortcuts, map drives, on Mac as well. What about some more of the backend services? Many companies will have a Windows backend. They're gonna be running a domain controller, for example. They're gonna be running DNS. They're gonna be running Active Directory. Uh, how does that work with the Mac? Well, pretty well, actually. Years ago, not so well. There was problems. It worked, but it didn't work, and there was problems. You couldn't log in sometimes. There was issues with password resets, all that sort of stuff. A lot of that stuff is now in the past. There's still little, 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 little things that are um, not 100% perfect, but I'll tell you what, 99.9% got no problem with connectivity for a Mac computer connecting into a domain, all right? Don't worry about that. You can bind Macs. You can take advantage of passwords um, through Active Directory, the same as you can on Windows. DNS, not a problem. DHCP, not a problem. Where you will have a problem is group policy. If you know anything about group policy, group policy is awesome. Generally, you're gonna be running group policy or some sort of group policy service 
on a uh, domain controller of some sort, Active Directory, right? And then you're pushing out policies to your fleet of computers. Start your screensaver after five minutes, um, lock the computer after five minutes, display a little warning sign when you log in, disable right click, all this sort of stuff um, you can do via group policies. However, these group policies for the most part will not work on the Mac. That's a real bummer. So that's one thing that will not work. So group policies, they're awesome, but they'll only be relevant for your Microsoft Windows computers. But there are equivalent software packages available for the Mac. It really depends how many Macs you've got, right? If you've only got one or two, you probably don't wanna go and invest in some software to go and manage your Mac fleet because you've only got a couple, right? But if you've got a much bigger pool and you wanna make things easier, there are Mac equivalent software packages that can do things very, very similar to group policy, but for the Mac. What about other things such as um, building images, you know, deploying images, um, pushing out software? Again, they're generally not going to work compatibility between the two. There are some that can do it, but not very good. Generally, you've got the really big ones on the Microsoft side. You've got things such as SCCM, You've got the Microsoft 365 stuff in there, Intune, etc. On the Mac, you've got, you can't use that on the Mac. On the Mac, you've got things like Jamf, which is a very, very good alternative to the other ones. So from a uh, management perspective, you can actually manage quite well both environments, but you will have different software for both environments that generally will not talk to each other. So what about not using Active Directory or not having domain controllers that are Microsoft based. Rather, what, what about the ones on the Apple? You got Mac OS Server. Um, it's okay. I don't, I personally am not a big, big fan of it. I think Microsoft does it a lot better. Uh, so when you're thinking about Active Directory on the Mac, you've got Open Directory. Um, years ago, there was a lot of compatibility issues. Oh, look, I'll be perfectly honest right now, I'm not up to speed with how good the server suite of Mac stuff is, uh, but Microsoft have got it. And, the, and Microsoft have invested so much time in their server backend server infrastructure. And Apple has invested a lot of time making sure that there's proper integration into all of that. I would generally say, let's stick with Microsoft backend services. So the decision is completely up to you and it's really dependent on the company. If the company does not need a Mac because people are not running, or don't have specific roles and responsibilities that will require a Mac, then perhaps stick with getting them Windows. But if you've got a huge budget, you've got a lot of money to spend, and you've got a lot of customers, maybe you're in an open plan office where you've got people coming in and out, you're in a design studio, or your company is really into cool, you, you, you've got a real thing where your company's brand and image um, needs to be really upfront, um, then the Mac could be the better approach. So a lot of the big tech companies, for example, Cisco, AWS, Amazon, right? Um, these guys, a lot of these guys are opting for the Mac, not because they need it necessarily, but because these guys are, they're salespeople, they're out on the floor, they're meeting customers, they, they, they're the epitome of cool, right? So they want something that makes that look, uh, give you an image, it's a brand, right? So, so really it depends on the company whether you're gonna go Windows or Mac, but the problems of way Wanda, of back in the day when uh, there was compatibility issues, a lot of that is gone. Still little things that are niggly between the two, but for the most part, you can pick one or the other and you can actually work quite well in an enterprise, in a business. There is my summary. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Let me know whether you're a Windows or a Mac person. Let me know perhaps what your company, like where you work, what does that look like? Do you have a mix between the two? Does it work well? Does it not work well? On top of that, please like and give me a thumbs up on my video and click on that subscription button with the notifications turned on to be kept up to date with all of my video releases. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate you spending the time. We'll see you next time.